Men be key in story development, but the only women that we see in games are usually scantily clad or as you were saying in some of the... Are you talking about advertising now or about portrayal of games? I think the game itself, women the way that they games. develop female characters in the games and the, the roles they tend to take. Which games are you talking about? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to use it as, a, as an example because it's so blatant, but Dead or Alive Volleyball is an example. <laughs> some of the fighting games, the, the attire that they put on the female characters. Um, what is your perspective on this phenomenon? It's pretty rampant, I think, in the gaming industry. Well, I, I mean, I think sex sells in every industry. It's really not gaming. So, I mean, I think that's something that's just, it's really easy. And therefore, we, you know, developers take advantage of it. And I, you see it everywhere, honestly. And it goes, it really comes, keeps coming back down to diversity because as we're branching out, we will have other ways to be selling these things and making these games interesting. But in the meantime, we're, all, we're always going to have those DOA, you know, the beach volleyball games. So those are going to exist. But that's why we want to have the other ones. ones. Yeah, exactly. Let me adjust my question then. In uh, the games that you play, what are some of your favorite female characters? Uh, I already said game. mine, so you guys go ahead. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Although I really couldn't get into the game so much, but I, I loved um, Zoe from The Longest Journey, Dreamfall, The Longest Journey. I felt like I really got to know her and know who she was, and she was so interesting to me. And you know, oh my god, the combat in the game, I was like, why? why? I mentioned before, I think that little girls are given their Barbie doll houses. I think you had, one of our girls mentioned this yesterday, or mentioned it, um, like she was given a Barbie doll house and her brother was given a game console, but she ended up playing the game console with him. Anyway, she liked a Barbie doll house also. <laughs> she liked the game console, and um, that's, I, you see that, I, or at least when I was growing up, you did see that a lot, um, but I, my, I get so much joy out of just you know being in the subway or in the airport and walking past and seeing a little girl playing on her DS. Like I was in an airport or I was in an airplane the other day and there was like three little girls all in a row, all with their little GBAs. It was so cute. I wanted to take a picture of them and I actually, I, I kind of collect those pictures of like little people like playing like boys and, and girls playing together, playing their little handhelds. And they're little, like they're five and six and like seven and they're just they're young and they're, they, don't, they don't conceive of this like girls aren't supposed to play video games thing. So the, the key is that all of us here, you know, those of you who are going to have kids at some point, your kids are going to play games, whether they're girls or boys, and that's awesome, and that's what we're going to be seeing. Like that, that will be the trend, is that it won't be such a I don't, stigmatized thing. But that's sort of more than a five-year time frame. I, well, but we're seeing it now, though. So, you know, I mean, I don't know when we're going to make that, like, leap over to the, the point where we have a balance, or at least it doesn't feel so separate between girl gamers and boy gamers. Um, but I, I think we're, we're seeing that progress now. Maybe it's just because I'm looking more, but I, I really feel like I see that a lot more. Like, I hear about my, my friends who have little nieces and nephews who, you know, they're like, what game should I get them? You know, I wasn't hearing that nearly as much a few years ago. Yeah, I think it matters a lot. And uh, to touch on the story about you know getting the barbecue house or getting the uh, the the video game. And uh, when I was about eight years old, I I was opening my Christmas presents, and my dad was handed one, and then I was handed one. And I open it, and it's Techno Super Bowl. <laughs> my dad opens it, and it's like. Tinkerbell fairy makeup. <laughs> he's like, oh no, I switched him. <laughs> and I was so excited. I felt like. Did you make him play that one? <laughs> I played it so much. He was like, and you put the makeup on your dad. <laughs> well, I think your question also points you. I mean, you mentioned it in your question, which is that it's a much larger issue. Maybe girls and boys do play games, but then somewhere along the line, something happens in our education system, maybe, that makes girls say, oh, programming, computer science, you know, math, it's too hard, it's not for me, whatever. And, I, you know, that's also something we need to address, and I, you know, that's a really big question. I work at a video game store, and parents often ask me for suggestions for their six, nine-year-old little daughter. And I think, you know, they've got a GBA, and what system do they have? And I think, you know, Legend of Zelda, or Final Fantasy, or you know, something interesting and stimulating. And then they say, oh, no, that looks hard. How about 12 Dancing Princesses? Or, you know, Barbie, and it's like, 
I want, you know, I urge the parents to step out, but they just don't. Good for you! And obviously those, those games that I recommend do have male, you know, main characters, but often they're children and it's, you know, the barrier isn't really there. But um, it's hard to, to come to a decision about that without coming all the way back to just a cultural problem or have this imbalance. And where do you start? You just have to start with the children. You can't, you, you can't um, encourage that imbalance from the beginning. But in a simpler way, what sort of games do you think, you, like if, if you had daughters or if you were little girls, what games do you think you would want, you know, you would want to play or you would want those little girls to play? Well, I wanted to play Load Runner. And you know why? It's because you could build your own levels. I don't know if you guys remember this, but you could actually construct your levels. And my sister and I would like make challenge levels, basically impossible levels for each other where we would die all the time. So I think, I mean, what you're doing, I think, is the right thing. You want to steer them towards good games. Like, forget about, because if a girl picks up a stupid, you know, 12 princesses game and says, oh, games are boring, they're stupid, I don't want to play them anymore. Right? Yeah, I, I think I heard a story once of a teacher who was asking her, her girl students, like, why don't you play games? And a lot of, I think she, one girl was like, I play games, but I only want to play the good ones. You know, and like there's a lot of games out there that aren't good, and boys like to play them anyway. The girls may be a little bit more selective about which ones they want to play. I personally, I, I, I love puzzle games, and I know that that's stereotyped as like a, girl, a female thing. I don't really think it is a female thing. I, I, it always seems to get lumped into that, like it seems it's described it's, as a cross gender. Both men and women like it, and therefore that's the thing we should send to the women. You know, the men market, the men producers, that's, that's the one thing you can sell. Because they can understand it, like, I like it too, exactly. and magically women happen to like it also. And they're desperate, they're like, okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think, I like I like puzzle games because I feel like I'm being productive, kind of, and I'm like, figuring things out. And also because I can do, you know, I can do a level of Tetris, or, you know, I can do 10 minutes of it, and I actually accomplish something in those 10 minutes, as opposed to World of Warcraft, you can't even get somewhere in 10 minutes. Like, I mean, it does take some dedication, and there are a lot of, I mean, women, grown women who don't just have, they don't have the time. They're like, no, I have things, real life things I have to do. Um, but they're willing to sit there and play Luminous for, I know I keep mentioning Luminous, sorry. It's just, <laughs> it's totally it, it just keeps popping to mind, I mean, it's really fun. So, I mean, puzzle games, uh, that is honestly one that I, I like, and I wouldn't be ashamed to push it either. Yeah, so back in, when I was, a, like, 10 or so, we had Oregon Trail, and, um, Hi! Africa and, uh, and or, I don't know, it's Venture Arctic, but uh, it's, it's so good. It's like an ecosystem game where you kind of play around with all kinds of different animals and yeah. So, that actually like Oregon Trail or, or that reminds me of another one that I played around that, that time, which was Where in the World's Carbon San Diego. Yeah. That's, that's an awesome female character in the game because she's a villain too. She's my phone number never works. Ever. I put in my phone number and try to call myself with the <laughs> phone because I was a detective. <laughs> I, all I know is that I still know like, like you know, 80% of the world's country's flags from that game, which is awesome, you know, and like every, I just, every, all my guy friends and Fun and educational. And Nancy Drew. So you just keep Nancy pushing the good games until, yeah. until the good games are also in pros games. Yeah, keep pushing the good ones. So I have a question for you guys. So Barbie's taking a lot of flack today. No, yeah. I said there's nothing wrong with Barbie fashion designer. I would have killed for that game if I were a Right. Six so I, my question is, you know, these girls are gaming, but they're they're playing Barbie Pet Vet or they're playing Nancy Drew. Those are fun games. You know, I mean, when are we going to get away from the you're not a gamer unless you're playing Halo or you're playing something? I mean, is it isn't it okay to play Barbie and you're still a gamer? Absolutely. But I think yeah, that this culture recognizes the time, like kind of the time investment and kind of how crazy you are. You yeah. know, like a lot of the people here are pretty crazy about sure. games. Sure. So that's that's kind of what we recognize as our, right. as our brother. But do you think that that could possibly be part of, you know, trying to, um, you know, keep, we're trying to broaden 
the gaming market, but maybe it's that mentality that's one of the barriers, is that you're not a real gamer unless you play 40 hours a week and you stink. But I also think that people, <laughs> I think the people who just have their DS and like to play a little bit don't yeah. care if they're classified as a gamer or not. But maybe they'll be more gamer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I wonder if even maybe someday the moniker gamer will kind of go away as a subset of humanity. I mean, no one says, I'm a reader. I totally love books. <laughs> I read them all the time. I read the newspaper. I read the internet. I'm a reader. <laughs> so maybe someday we'll just, you know, we'll just be like, yeah, I play games. I read. I watch movies. Back to the advertising and branching new markets, one of the really obvious ways that seems to me to get girls into console gaming is karaoke games. But nobody ever seems to know they exist. Why is that? What do you mean? You people think for you right now. <laughs> I, I love them, but I've, I've always been a gamer, and it took me four games before I found out that they existed. They're not advertised anywhere. I mean, how hard would it be for them to pop something up on the middle of American Idol or something like that? It well, seems yeah. easy. <laughs> you're right. I think, I think you're absolutely right. That, that, that we, I mean, it goes back to the marketing point, certainly, of like, we just need to market this stuff. But, uh, you know, I mean, at least from my experience, those types of games tend to, um, I mean, it depends on your publisher, obviously, but, uh, you know, get, gets the smaller budget, usually. Yeah. And so, you know, an American Idol advertisement would be really expensive. Millions. Like, be, be, I just think it's ironic. I think it's like, it's like, a lot of people to buy a console based solely on those games. Yeah. Well, let's think about, like, SingStar. When SingStar right. comes out, and Sony has millions of dollars and that's the only reason I bought a PS3 exactly see why are they them. not hitting that you know? I, don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't understand it either but I, I do I want to say maybe this is unrelated I think it's the stuff <laughs> um, like other games that that people can play that are kind of a, a good introductory game to consoles because I think we have a barrier <laughs> In, uh, oh, I know. Post. I know. <laughs> kinda, I go to Digitech, so that kind of leads to my question. Oh, great. Um, there's currently 3% uh, female programmers at our school, so we're kind of like shy. Like, whenever you see one, they're always like, oh, you're an artist. Okay. Um, so when you're in the video game industry, on the development side, you see a lot of women in public, in production, in uh, on the art side, on uh, you know producers, management, all that scheduling. But you don't really see a lot of female coders. Because, like you said before, it is very math and science driven, and I don't know if that's education or you know what has instilled that belief on us. But there's a lot of women that don't really understand like how like they're very very good at what they do, and because they're discouraged and there's that belief that oh you're a girl you can't do it, whatever. What do you think we can do to promote math and science better to women to realize that coding is an actual valuable career that women can pursue? Well, I have a question for you. How did it work for you? Like, how, how, why did you get into it? I got into it because I played Ocarina of Time. was like, I want to make a game like that. And whatever I can do to do that, sign me up. I think if you're, you're young and you're playing video games, you, you get into technology a little bit more, and then you understand, like, hey, you know, technology's fun. Mm -hmm. Well, but let's be realistic, though. To be a coder, like a really, it, it's such a specialized kind of skill, and it takes a certain mindset and a certain ability that, um, you know, for whatever reason, maybe are not women's strongest. The reason that we have so many female producers, honestly, and I've heard like men are better hiring. No, 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 that's not why. It's because women are better at producing because the producer role has so, you know, you have to like manage a schedule, you have to manage all these teams, you have to make sure everyone talks to each other, you have to, I mean, it's an incredibly difficult, complicated job, which for whatever reason, socialization or gender, whatever, I don't know, women tend to be better at that. We're better able to multitask in that way. Coding is like the opposite. It's like, you're like narrow focus, I'm gonna only do this and not talk to anybody for three days. Yeah. And some women are good at that too, but for whatever reason there seem to be more men who are, who are good at that. Men also have a higher instance of Asperger's syndrome. So, you know, go no figure, I don't know, are they related? Maybe. But I mean I think, you know, I think it's great that women go into programming, but I also think that um, uh, you know, there, uh, there's just a lot of complicated questions that Yeah, but but, uh, you know, so go solve them. I will. But I do think 
my, my, this will be my last point. You know, you're, you're saying that playing Ocarina of Time was what did it for you. If we have more girls playing these games, they'll be thinking like, maybe that's what I could do. Because it didn't occur to me when I was little, honestly, and like, it kind of occurred to me late, but at least it occurred to me because I had played games before. And so as we get more girls playing, it'll be something that I think will naturally follow. All right, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming, and thank you to Morgan, Teresa, and James. Today, so I know it's a beautiful day out. There's a lot, a lot cooler things you could be doing.